Okay, this is the gauge to measure the gap on Tempest fine wire spark plugs. And we're going to make some today. So what we have is these two go, no, go. Well, it's a go, no, go type of gauge. The gap in the spark plug is supposed to be between 17 and 21 thousandths. So you take your 17 thousandths gauge and you run it and make sure that that fits through the gap. And you turn it over to your 21 thousandths gauge and make sure that does not fit. If that fits, then you got too much gap. If the 17 does not fit, you have too little gap. Um, this is the Tempest is like one or two thousandths different in gap than the uh, Champion. This gauge would work for either one, but since I have Tempest plugs, I decided to make some gauges specifically to fit that. Now, I have Fusion, but uh, I can never get it to run. I can draw stuff, and then it gets to a point where it does something weird. So, I went old school with this, and I just did standard G-codes in order to, uh, to make it. So, basically, I programmed the whole thing by hand. So, I made uh, 17 of these. And I kind of came up with uh, an idea. Since it's kind of small and hard to label, what I've done is I knurled one end. The knurled end has the larger um, wire. That's 0 0.021. The non-knurled end has the 0 0.017. This was my one of my test pieces, these two. And then I decided um, I'm going to only knurl one end so that way you know which side's the big size side. So the process of making these, some of these pins are a little bent, is uh, as follows. I pull out a piece of quarter inch brass round so that it's a little more, it, it's two inches out from the chuck. And then the second operation is to knurl this end. They went ahead and knurled that end. And then the third operation is to cut it off at an inch and a half. Now I could have tapered and drilled and done all that to this end, except sticking out so far, you get a little bit of deflection. And I didn't want that. So I just decided to cut them all. I had to cut them all anyway. So I figured I'd cut them all and then do a, another operation. So after they're, they're done, they're blanks, you have knurled all the way to the end and then, you know, square on this end. So then I mounted a, a collet stop in the collet and then I just pushed this inch and a half piece in till it bottoms out, lock the collet, and then it comes back and it drills a pilot hole that's only 0 .02 inches deep. Then it turns around and starts drilling the hole for the wire. Now the smallest drill I had on hand was a number 80 numbered drill, which is only a point zero four drill. Well these wires are 0 0.017 and 0 0.021. So they're way bigger than the hole. So I used some Loctite that has uh, carbon in it, carbon powder to give it some extra strength to glue these in. Anyway, point, point oh eight, or point oh four drill is pretty damn small, especially when you see that thing rapiding at 19, 90 inches a minute and come right up and stop point zero zero five inches short of the the part before it starts drilling. I've got the part turning at 1500 RPM and then the feed rate for that little drill is 0.25 inches per minute. And I have it drill 0.02 inches deep, wrap it all the way back out, wrap it in uh, 2000 short of where it was and then go another 02 uh, inches 
in each time until I get to uh, 0.16 inches deep. Um, so it's peck drilling uh, when it's doing that. It's, it's interesting getting beautiful chips when I'm doing it, but uh, let me tell you, there's no, there's no uh, EPO button or cycle stop button fast enough if something goes wrong when you're doing something that tiny. You just got to hope that the programming's all right. So it goes ahead, drills one end, and then it cuts this taper, and then it retracts. I loosen the chuck, flip it around, put it back in, and it cuts the same thing on this side. Once all the cuts are done, I take it out and I just glue the wires in. Um, I got enough wire to make, like I said, 15. I ended up with 17 because I got these other two. So that's uh, the base basic uh, how it's going to be done. Um, as far as this this taper, all I did is I went in with a 45 degree tool to uh, so where I had a point one radius at the tip there because that looked about right. And then I just uh, do a uh, G01 uh, Z minus 3 X point two five five or so and just have it come out in one cut and that makes that taper there's no fancy programming or anything to do that so that's it it's a long explanation for a little tiny tool um, I'll get to the actual machining I'll show some video of that okay we're going to make a part Yeah. Put this part around. Do the other side. 